Hi there, this is Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney, and today I'm sharing with you a few home updates that we made this weekend, including these DIY floating shelves behind me, so stay tuned. So we've been in this house for a little over a year and a half, and we purchased it right before our wedding. We've done a ton to this house, we've done a lot of updates, but there's still some rooms that I hadn't touched yet. So, I wanted to figure out some ways that I could add a lot of visual appeal without spending a ton of money and without spending a ton of time because my husband works full time, I work full time, we both travel a lot for work. So we had this open weekend and decided that we wanted to get some stuff done. So let's get started. The first area we wanted to tackle was this bare wall in our living room. So we headed to Home Depot. I drug along my husband to help me with everything. I mean, look at these aisles. Wood can be overwhelming. What screws do you need? I honestly don't know. So this is going to be more of a kind of vlog through our process instead of a tutorial because, I mean, I obviously was not involved in this picking of the wood. <laughs> So the first thing we did was measure and cut our wood. Home Depot will cut the wood for you, um, but they won't do exact cuts. So if you're looking to make these, um, being able to invest in a saw like this is pretty helpful. A lot of people that you know may have a saw, so they would be willing to share with you. So, you know, you can either do that or have them make the cuts. I have never cut with the saw before, so this was a first time experience, but I was pretty proud of myself that I didn't chop my hand off and yeah. I made a pretty straight cut. I left the rest to my husband so he could help me kind of get everything squared away and cut so that it was all going to fit together correctly. Number one support staff right there is what I'm being. What here in front of me are for the three shelves in my house. So if you're just making one shelf, you're gonna need a third of everything. Uh, but you're going to need a two by four cut to 32 inches, two by twos cut to seven inches. You'll need four for each shelf. Then a one by six cut to 36 inches. Also one by six cut to seven and a quarter inches are those small pieces. And then a one by eight cut to 34 and a half inches. And I will have all those dimensions in the description box below. After everything is cut, you're gonna to wanna to sand it all down and you're gonna to wanna to do a rough sanding. One, so that everything is smooth, but then also two, it's way easier to do it now than to sand it when it's all assembled, I think. I definitely would recommend investing if you're gonna do a lot of projects in a power sander, orbital sander, they're really not that expensive and you'll fly through this. Usually when I make signs, I do it by hand, but I'm not trying to do all these boards by hand. Um, but I whipped through these pretty quick, like 20 minutes, did it by myself. So um, fairly simple if you've got the right tools. So now the next step is to assemble the box. We first did the sides to the top, nailed that all in, used wood glue, and then assembled the sides. So the front and the sides of the shelves are on the outside and the top and bottom are inserted in. We went and got a new Ryobi brad nailer and it did the trick. So our first attempt at using the two by twos really didn't work that well. It was super annoying. So we ended up cutting two by twos to those dimensions and those worked a lot better. We screwed them into each end of the two by four that was cut for the wall. And then we also screwed one twice into the center of the board. This is gonna act as kind of the shelf holder. And this is what it's gonna look like when you are done. This is all gonna depend on the size of your shelf. Then I grabbed my favorite, favorite, favorite wood finish stain, Dark Walnut 2716 from Minwax, and I got to work staining these shelves. I always like to wear gloves when I'm staining, and typically I'll use a cheap foam brush you can get at the Dollar Tree or Walmart, and then I brush it down with some paper towels. Some people use socks, some people use old t-shirts. Really, I think it's whatever works for you. These looked gorgeous with that dark wood stain. I was so excited after they were drying. They looked just like what I wanted. Also pro tip, if you have the time and you have other stuff or you're thinking about projects in the future, stain all at once. 
So then we headed inside to install the shelves. So you're gonna wanna measure, again, all of this is gonna depend on the size of your walls, but highly suggest using a level and also having somebody else, four hands were definitely better than two. So we went through, hung the first shelf, measured for the second shelf, got everything hung up and so on and so forth through the third shelf. The nice thing about these shelves is they slide on and off. So if you have, you know, a blemish or an imperfect corner or like mine where the wood glue was a little messy and the stain didn't hit that well, you can kind of use it as a template to get everything kind of lined up and then you can flip them, rearrange, you know, so they all look good. And I am seriously in love with these shelves. It wasn't that hard, grand scheme, big picture, and they turned out so good. Shameless plug, I have a DIY for those pumpkins. I will link up above. So now that my shelves were done, I had a couple Dollar Tree items that I wanted to kind of spruce up for this area. So I had two votive leaf kind of glass holders, and then also this tray that I hauled in my last Dollar Tree haul. And so I thought with both of these items, I could just hit them with some white spray paint. This is under a dollar from Walmart, and they would be good to go. So for the votive holders that was the case but for this tray it it didn't cover the way i wanted it to so i ended up hitting it with one coat of spray paint and then i used my waverly chalk paint and painted that on with a brush and the coverage was much better i love how these votives turned out they're so farmhouse and they look really cute on the tray on my coffee table which is right by those shelves this is kind of the nighttime vibe i love lighting candles at night sitting watching tv with my husband it's my favorite spot to be in the house now and also this leaf is great for shelves it's only a dollar you can make a couple of these you could paint them different colors and here it is the finished product all three shelves i'm still working on the decor but i love how they turned out now we're up in our master bathroom and we haven't done a whole lot to this space really because no one really sees it and also because it's very small so we added some paint to the walls and we also added the shower curtain but other than that until we added these shelves in front of me that you're seeing we haven't really done a whole lot to this bathroom so um, we don't have much storage in here we've got this teeny tiny little vanity um, so I wanted to add some storage and also some style to this bathroom because it's the one that I use the most, um, but wanted to kind of make it feel a little bit more homey. So wanted to show you what I did to these Ikea shelves to make them look a little bit more farmhouse, a little bit more high end. Um, and these are the same shelves that I have in my other bathrooms. Um, the only thing that's different is the hardware, um, which I stained, which I'll show you. So here is the first shelf and um, as I mentioned, this hardware is the same as what you see in the other bathrooms in my house, but this one I decided to use the dark walnut stain from Midwax and that matches all of the signs in my house. It matches um, a lot of the items that we reused as decor for my wedding. So I really like how these look. They're very farmhouse. They give us the opportunity to decorate, but then also um, use it for function. So I use the Q-tips up there. I'm going to get a mason jar for little cotton rounds that I use to remove my makeup. And then this beautiful monogram here, I bought a while back, like before our wedding, that I was gonna use this decor, but I didn't end up using it. So I stained it and put it in here. Um, so Alex and Whitney, um, and that is also the dark, walnut finish from Minwax. I will link that down below. The pumpkins, because people probably want to know, are from Target. The little word is from the Dollar Tree. And then we got the Mr. and Mrs. frame as a gift for our wedding. So I originally thought I was just going to do one shelf here, but then I thought, you know, take it up. We can use this top one for storage. So even though it's storage, I still wanted it to be pretty. So I used this basket from Ikea and that's got a bunch of extra stuff in it. And I think because of the white handle on our steamer, you can't really um, tell, but I use that steamer all the time and it's a Conair steamer and I wanted it to be easily accessible and I don't have room under this thing to do it. So I went ahead and put it there. Um, the center here is still a work in progress, working on that decor, but then I used this basket that I got from Hobby Lobby that was just sitting in my guest room, and I ended up using it as a toilet paper holder. And I really, truly believe that your bathrooms need to be pretty, but they also need to be functional, first off, because that is what it is. It's like a kitchen. You want it to be pretty, but you also want it to be functional. 
So I really love how this kind of melded my style, but then also has some hidden storage up above and I was so excited. So these shelves, I will link down below. I'm not sure of the name of them, but the hardware comes in an unfinished wood. They're very cheap. Um, we outfitted our whole house with them and the dark wood really ties back into the stuff around the house and they look a lot more high-end than the price we paid. And there you have it. Those are all the projects that I cranked out this weekend with my husband for our house. I hope this inspired you to tackle some farmhouse decor or any kind of decor you like for your own home. I've got a ton more decor videos and other content coming up, so be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!